Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough. This is Gazetta United and I am here again in the coffee shop with a little coffee and of course the Sunday papers and we're going to be going through all the back pages, find out what's going on in the Premier League. Obviously no Manchester United in action this weekend, although a few of the results have gone our way and it means if Manchester United win every single league game between now and the end of the season, we will finish third. Who the hell would have thought that, eh? Who would have thought that a couple of months ago? Who would have thought that pre-lockdown? Who would have thought that in January? Who would have thought that if we suffered back-to-back -back defeats against Burnley and Liverpool? I definitely wouldn't have. I was worried for Ali's job at some point and to think he could guide us to third place and potentially two trophies as well. Oh, it means there's an exciting end to the season ahead and it shows you just how well he and the squad have done in getting Manchester United back on track so far. But just like he is keen to impress to his players and tell his players the job isn't over. This is not where we want to be. We want to be winning titles and Champions League trophies and for that we have to keep pushing on and the boys are hopefully going to keep pushing on and we've got that game against Southampton on Monday. Make sure you're joining us here on Stretford Paddock for the watch along, the fan cams, the reviews, all that good stuff because we will have you covered for it all. But right now we're getting stuck into these back pages so let's get stuck in. Let me just have a little sip of this first. How you thinking of the setup? Looking like the Brown James Richardson these days, ain't I? Anyway, let's get stuck in. Right, first up, we've got the Daily Star. And on the back page, an English Lionheart. Hero of 66, dies at 85. The world of football paid a tribute to England legend yesterday after 1966 World Cup winner Jack Charlton died aged 85. Obviously the older brother of Sir Bobby Charlton. May he rest in peace and thoughts go out to all of his family and friends at this difficult time. What a legend not only for England but Ireland as well. Um, Irish fans absolutely adore him and you never usually hear those kind of sentences with the English and Irish adoring someone but they do and what a hero Jack Charlton is. World Cup winner and even though he played for Leeds you know everybody still loves him. Rest in peace, Jack Charlton. We've also got a little bit about Aguero here, potentially signing a new deal at Manchester City. Nuno talks as well. He's potentially signing a new deal at Wolves. And how good of a job is he doing at the moment? We go inside these back pages and you've got La Salso in here saying, we need more time together. Talking about Jose Mourinho now, I hope you get more time together. I'm glad that he's been in the job such a little time that he's not going to get sacked surely by the end of this season and that they'll have to keep a hold of him to at least like next season. He's going to get sacked next season at some point, which means Spurs are derailed during that campaign. That's one less team to have to worry about. You also think about Chelsea. I'm glad they got Lampard. I really am glad they've got Lampard and I'm glad he's kept the Wolves off his back. He's kind of sat in top four all the way this season and not really had much criticism, which is bizarre when you consider some of the criticism that's been served up to Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. But what I love is he's gone under the radar. He's not getting criticised. Hopefully he drops out of the top four in the Champions League spots, keeps the job for next season and then that's another team that we don't have to worry about. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep going through these papers and we have got a little bit on Jaden Sancho in here. It says, my big ambition, says Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. All right, let me sort this out just so you lot can see it at home. Bloody hell, I've made a dog's ear of this newspaper, but here we go. Ali and his big San Bishan. Sancho and United fit perfectly. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has sent a clear message to Jadon Sancho that Manchester United is the club for you. The United boss has been on Sancho's trail all season and is hoping to sign the £100 million rated Borussia Dortmund and England winger uh, age 20. Sancho fits United's transfer strategy profile perfectly as a young, ambitious Englishman with the potential to be one of world football's great players and can you just imagine adding him into that mix of Martial, Mason Greenwood, Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sancho, Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba, say it again. I've got to bring that back now as well. Say it again like we've got such a good team at the moment but I don't want to get carried away. don't want to get ahead of myself. This game against Southampton's worrying me and we've got Ralph Hasenhutl down here saying he's tipped his hat to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for coping with the pressure in one of football's hottest seats so far that is Hassan Hootel's been doing 
a decent job for Southampton, especially when you consider they got battered 9-0 this season off Leicester. Feels like a long time ago that, and it feels like a long time ago for Southampton too because they've really recovered. A lot of us thought Hassan Hootl would lose his job after that game. He didn't. He hung in there. He's got the players back on side. Danny Ings is scoring goals. Southampton are looking good. They beat uh, City the other day, um, and that performance was no fluke. And you've got to think, they're a big, big threat to Manchester United at Old Trafford on Monday. Of course, they're a little bit Jekyll and Hyde. You never quite know which one is going to turn up. But if a good Hassan Hoot or Southampton side turn up, then Manchester United have got to be worried. Um, let's have a look further in. Eddie Howe's in there and he's saying he's not ready to throw the towel in. Remember when people were linking him with Arsenal, Man United, all these other teams? Now it looks like he could be getting booted out of Bournemouth. To be fair, if I was Bournemouth, I wouldn't sack Eddie Howe. Um, look, he's got you all the way there. He's, he's, he's managed to keep you in the Premier League for an awful time, uh, awfully long time. And like Bournemouth, like what do you expect of them? Do you know what I mean? They're going to be involved in a relegation battle at some point, and they're probably going to go down at some point. They'll probably come back up too with Eddie Howe. So I think it's a bit of a dangerous one for Bournemouth. If they did go to sack Eddie Howe, you know, how do you replace him um, in, in in the summer for someone that's definitely going to get you back up? I don't think you do. Um, good week, bad week. From Jeremy Cross, he's got Phil Foden, Patrick Mahomes, and Mason Greenwood having a good week. Bad week, Dean Smith, Mario Balotelli, and VAR. But it says, just a mistake. Time's running out for Jose as Levy looks for answers. And I, I know I keep saying it here. I keep saying it here. But I cannot believe he got that job at Spurs. And they, they sat punch for him. They sat punch for him. There's a bit here, though, on David De Gea, which says, David De Gea appears to lose it. De Gea will be the centre of attention tomorrow night for all the right reasons. The Spain keeper will make his 400th appearance for United when Southampton visit Old Trafford and is expected to be given a presentation on the pitch before kickoff. It's quite an achievement as De Gea has now overtaken Peter Schmeichel when it comes to the most appearances by a foreign player in the club's history. But the milestone has become a millstone around the neck of someone who is approaching a decade of service at United and is starting to look like he's on the wane. United might be on an unbeaten run of 17 games, but this has little to do with David De Gea. And I've got to stop there because this is absolute bollocks from Jeremy Cross. Look, David De Gea hasn't been great for Manchester United. I think that's granted. At times, he's made mistakes, which we'd rather have seen him go without making. But also, like, <laughs> you don't hear this talk about next goalkeepers who are making mistakes on a regular basis. And also, David De Gea has made some fantastic saves along the way there as well. Whilst he's made the odd error, it's not that David De Gea of old where he just looks shaky from every corner, shaky every time someone comes near him. He's still been pulling off those world-class saves. He's still keeping clean sheets as well. I think people are just too quick to, to write him off a little bit and say he's finished. I don't think he is finished. I think we're just used to him playing up here for so long, for such a long time. And now he's come down a little bit. He's still one of the best goalkeepers in the world for me. And United need to stand by him. Look, Dean Henderson done us a massive favour against Sheffield United getting, you know, a clean sheet in a 3-0 win and all that but we don't want to rush it with him we really don't want to rush it with him we're moving on to the Sunday Express giant of the game and there's big Jack Charlton on the back with the World Cup in his hand big Jack is gone the death of World Cup winner Jack Charlton left the world of football morning one of its most engaging heroes as a giant center half he was one of the rocks of England's glory in 1966 as a manager he inspired the greatest days of Irish football and tributes flowed in a flood tide from both nations what a hero Jack Charlton, and again, I don't think it can be said enough, but rest in peace to him. Um, and I hope, you know, the Charlton family is going through a more easy time at this moment. Um, not much else on here. There is a little bit on the inside. Arteta's got this message for his young guns. Play with heart and soul. You've got to say some of the younger players at Arsenal are looking good. The likes of Bakayo Saka, uh, Kieran Tierney, etc. But again, I'm not really... Some might say I'm, I'm, I'm drinking on that haterade, but I'm not really concerned by Arsenal and Arteta. I'm looking up from a Manchester United fan perspective. I'm looking up. I want us to keep closing that gap on City and Liverpool next season and not looking behind us as, at mid-table teams like Arsenal and Spurs. Come on, guys. Let's keep it going, yeah? Right. By the way, Mikel Antonio scoring four in the Premier League. First West Ham player to ever do that. Score four in the Premier League. What the hell are you like playing at Norwich? No wonder you're getting relegated. Moving on, another back page dedicated to Jack Charlton. Goodbye to a legend. 
what more can be said about him. Um, an absolute legend of football, a legend of English football, legend of Irish football. Um, what a hero and there's loads of pages dedicated to him inside the newspaper, which is rightly so. Um, this draw hurt like a defeat. It's why Klopp's runaway Reds are champions, says Andy Dunn. All right, take your nose out of his arse, old Gary. Dogs do that. You're not a dog, are you, Gary? Uh, villains' careers in peril. Dean Smith has warned Villa stars that their Premier League careers are on the line, not just the villains' own top flight status. Tell you one player whose Premier League career isn't on the line. That's Jack Grealish, because hopefully he'll be ending up at Manchester United. Legend Berber says, I know Mourinho's team can do a lot better. Spurred on by pride. They're going to let Arsenal batter them, aren't they? They're actually going to let Arsenal batter them. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. Look, a little bit on United on the inside as well. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes Manchester United have discovered another baby-faced assassin in Mason Greenwood. Solskjaer's youthful looks belied a ruthless nature in front of goal when he was a young player in Sir Alex Ferguson's all-conquering United teams two decades ago. And in 18-year-old Greenwood, he recognises a kindred spirit who shows no fear on the Old Trafford stage. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I haven't seen a young player break onto the scene like Mason Greenwood and look so good so quickly in a long, long time. Mason Greenwood is a massive, massive talent and I can't wait to continue seeing him develop at Manchester United. We go inside to this, saying golden years, Blades David beats Goliaths twice. I'll be honest with you, I think that's utter bollocks. Chris Wilder's a better manager than Frank Lampard. Lampard, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to save it for next week on Gazetta United after Manchester United have dealt with Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final. I will come back to what i got to say about him. But guys, thank you for tuning in today on the Gazetta United. That has been me and those back pages. Remember, rest in peace to Jack Charlton. Let us know all your thoughts on those things that we discovered. Looking ahead towards that Southampton game. How good is Mason Greenwood? What did you make of the results this weekend um, in the Premier League? And of course, of course, make sure you're checking out the content surrounding Man United against Southampton in the Premier League. The preview is already up and there'll be plenty more content coming your way as well with the watch along we had thousands of you guys watching the watch along with us live make sure you're joining us it's the best watch along in town myself joe stee and i think mr andy tate is joining us this weekend so make sure you're keeping it locked to stretford paddock make sure you're subscribing liking commenting and sharing the united gazetta or gazetta united rather we'll be back very very soon but until then i've been adam mccola i'm out of here